The last thing I want to talk about with the speed distribution is the fact that we can actually do experiments to verify that this distribution is real. All right, so everything, you know, it was all derived theoretically, but does this actually match reality? Can we measure this distribution? And you might wonder, how do you get, how do you do that, right? We can't go in and like watch individual gas particles and see how fast they're moving and then sort of tally all those up and then make a little bar graph of all the different speeds that, you know, that's not something we have the capability of doing with instruments. So there's a more clever way to do this, um, and this is in section 27-5 of your textbook. Um, and the basic idea is that you have a gas inside of an oven at fixed temperature. So this is how, you know, you want to control something, you're controlling the temperature. And you have a little hole in it here and a little bit of that gas is leaking out. Uh, so, uh, so you have a gas at a, at a particular temperature and you let, let some small fraction of it leave. And you have some sort of collimating slits. Um, the point of these is just to turn sort of a, a blob of gas into a beam so that you can control, you know, you know where it's going. Uh, so collimating slits makes a beam. And then the gas keeps going through here and hits a velocity selector. And we'll look at what that actually looks like in just a minute. And then you have a detector on the other side to be able to see if gas particles make it through. Sorry, not one detector, but not multiple detectors, just one. And all of this in, inside of a vacuum system. Just so you can rule out so that you don't have other gas particles coming in and interfering with your with your beam that you've made. Uh, and so what this velocity selector looks like, uh, you can look at figure 27.9. Um, I, I don't want to copy it here because I want to show a video in just a second that shows a slightly different version of it, but that's a little bit clearer to see. It shows the velocity selector. What you have is a rotating set of disks with slits in them, and only specific velocities will make it through by changing how fast the disks are rotating. They're sort of staggered from each other, so it has to make it through each disk to, to make it through uh, the velocity selector. Now, rather than me waving my hands around, a, uh, a better way to look at this is to look at a video. So this is a website that's linked on Moodle as well, so you can come back and look at this on your own. Um, but this is uh, one example of velocity selector. This is slightly different than what's in your textbook because here we have a groove drum. So rather than a bunch of separate disks, it's all one piece. Uh, but it's the same idea. Uh, so we'll go ahead and watch this video here. Uh, so here's our oven on the left hand side that's producing our gases. And here's our little hole up here. And the gas is coming out. These are our collimating slits here. So we have a stream of gas particles coming out. And now they come out as a nice beam. Uh, and so this is showing a close-up of the gas coming out and going through the, the slits. Well, in this case, it's coming holes. Now here's our velocity selector. So we have this helical drum that's spinning at a fixed speed that's controlled quite well. And as the gas particles are going through, only those that are going at the right velocity that will match this will actually make it through this whole drum apparatus as it's spinning. And so that's a way to select a one particular velocity out of all the possible velocities, or I should say speeds. Um, we can say velocity because it's in a specific direction. Um, that's, how, that's how we can pick just that one particular speed that's going through. And then we detect it over here once it's, once it's made it through. So this is just looping through again. Let me just stop this. So with this, we can actually get um, we can get experimental data that verifies the distribution, right? The Maxwell distribution that we showed previously. So, the you know, so you you, uh, you can do the experiment by changing the speed of that drum. So you can start slow, and that'll be your low velocity particles, your slow slow particles, and as you speed it up, you're you're getting you know faster and faster particles that are going to make it through, um, and that's a, that's the way you can um, map out this distribution and show that it does indeed match the experimental uh, the experimental and theoretical results match each other.